Welcome back to the next episode of the Monarchy series with Ark Survival Guide. Today, we're gonna do a ton of stuff, starting with visiting Vanaheim, one of the most beautiful places in all of Ark, to steal poison wyvern eggs. With Kaya on fire, fire pumpkin, and teacher's game too. Then you can get a little preview of how our base looks today, cause I'm gonna give you a full base tour now that our base is finished. And I'll show you why we have over a billion metal ingots. I'm not exaggerating. We're also gonna tame a bunch of water mounts, including sarcos, sharks, and dolphins. And we're gonna do one of the most nail-biting tames I've ever done for a dimorphodon breeding pair. Please like and share this video, comment and subscribe to this channel, and ring that bell for all notifications so you don't miss our next video. And let's get started! So we got an invite from Teach and Fire Pumpkin to go explore Vanaheim. They had gathered all the runestones needed to teleport over there, and it is a beautiful place. And we were going to go in and try to steal some poison wyvern eggs from the poison wyvern trench. Oh, oh man. How so pretty is it? Sweet. Isn't this awesome? Sweet. Wait the animals. Just wait till you see them. Yes. So are we going to stay together? We're just going to fly around. We're just, we're just gonna uh, fly around, right? Well, you guys can do what you want. I have to go oh. take care of this, uh, this, yes, this, um, this thing. Gotcha. I don't even know first. what it is that I want to tame. Nice. Probably just blue stuff. So we explored around for a bit because Vanaheim is one of the most beautiful places in Ark. And then we met back up at the Wyvern Trench to steal some poison wyvern eggs. Yeah, you're we good. Are. You won't get good deal. Yeah. Nobody. Nobody. What are we doing here? <laughs> We're going this way to get poison wyvern eggs. I need you guys just to bring the poison wyverns to Tiny, and Tiny will take care of them. Uh, <laughs> can I Can I do it on a wyvern instead of my mewing? Because I don't know. Oh, heck yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Not my wing only. No, I'm joking. <laughs> All right, so let's bring them to the window. <laughs> All right, E. Look, sir, oh my God, you guys are being followed. <laughs> Here we go. Yep. Okay, there was some damage. So, uh, well, you're nope. watching that one, so, oh, no, no, that's not very nice of you, is it now? <laughs> All right. Over Another here, one should there's be a giga, incoming. and it wants to be your best friend. I want to be your friend. Yeah. Come say hi. Yeah. Let's be friends. Wee. Oh, all there the you go. Look, there's an egg. Layers so there. Without me. All right, here, I like it. So, Did is you your just right, there's, there's an egg to our right. Nice. Grab the egg to the right. I see yeah, I more. Oh, there's plenty more. I'm just, we're going to grab <laughs> all the eggs. Nice. If you yeah. want, I'll grab the egg, and uh, that way I can get I'm just, like, going through. slowly so I, you oh, guys are protected. Awesome, I'll grab thanks. this egg, and then I'm going to run the dragon to see. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. No, 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 we got a poison uh, well, wyvern coming. Where is that? Uh-huh. Yep, we got uh -huh. friends. Do you have new friends? You. <laughs> I have friends, too. His oh, name my is goodness. Oh, that was oh, beautiful. My goodness. <laughs> oh, I'm surprised it didn't we die We got one there. way oh, up God. in the air. He's coming down now. And here we go. He wants oh. to visit. I'll try to get him right down next to you. That is so handy having a oh, gamer around. Lord. Yeah, she's nice. And all the creatures in Vanaheim are really cool looking. They spawn in crazy colors, and most of them are the aberrant glow-in-the-dark versions. And while I was out exploring, I found Kaya had trapped a really cool spino. Oh. Hawaiian bird of paradise flower. Yeah, you talking know, you know the bird of, isn't it called bird of, isn't yeah. it called bird oh, of paradise? I know what you're talking about, the bird of paradise flower. Yeah, These things are awesome. It's like, it's like blue that light blue and then like sh shock anyways blue. so the gotchas hatch in two oh, hours and 31 minutes Steven, nice. put that on your radar all right so 9 hey, uh, survival gun does this yep. make you nervous <laughs> i don't know I'm, I'll, I'll join you in here yeah? i wish no? we had a dance even. are you guys oh. still oh my god i almost <laughs> shot you in the head <laughs> okay now i'm nervous <laughs> forget <laughs> the spino now i'm nervous oh it's done <laughs> I wasn't nervous, and then you said you were going to shoot me, and I became nervous. <laughs> I, I saw a dart like this right by my head. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, you just walked in front of me. Look how so cool. This is so cool looking. Mm. I'm like standing on his face really admiring nice him. And then we tamed a pair of really nice level otters that were going to keep us very warm in the depths of the ocean and the deadly snows of Jotunheim, which we'll get to later. But now let me show you our secret hidden base that we've been working on for a while but haven't shown anyone until very recently. Because for a while our only defense at this base was a little hut that I would sleep in with a sign saying free haircuts in it and how well the base was hidden. And this creepy mannequin that Kaya set up. 
So after we got raided three times in a row, we decided it was not the best idea to have our nursery in the middle of a war zone, so Fire Pumpkin moved out to try to build a really cool fortress under a waterfall on the southern continent. And you can check that out on her channel, it's really cool. And Kaya and I built a huge nursery base in one of the coolest caves I've ever seen in Ark. And because we could team up and get about 10,000 wood, thatch, and stone in like 10 minutes, we were able to build a base really quickly and we brought Dave with us to give him a quick tour. So I'll show you Dave's reaction to our new base, but I'm also gonna show you a sneak preview of what our base looks like now. And I'll give you a tour now that it's mostly finished. I, I found, I found, I brought you a present, ASG. Oh, hi. You little guy. Yeah. Noms. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> Taste your nom noms. Uh, there's an infinite right. supply of bears in here, too, if you ever want to. If you're ever just, like, hungry for bear, there's just so much. Uh, I, I, I woke up just this morning and said I just don't have enough bear meat in my life. Exactly. Um, yeah. Oh, my God. Whoa. What <laughs> is this? Welcome to your new home. Oh, Beakington, don't be a sass. Just stay there. <laughs> oh my god, this is awesome. Nice. This is so cool. I thought open windows oh. might make it less likely for them to blow up the walls, too. Uh, oh, yeah. do, we're going to need a few more pedestals. You have four more pedestals? I'm sure we can make that oh. happen. <laughs> now, I'll tell you what, guys. Rather than showing you the rest of the tour of when Dave visited, let me show you what our base looks like now, because we've made some serious progress and it's pretty dang cool. So this is our cave. It's massive. We still haven't used up every bit of it, but we've used up quite a lot of space. It's a good thing it's so big, but is this beautiful or what? Now you'll notice we have quite a lot of very advanced structures and tech stuff going on. Um, yeah, we'll get to this in a minute. This is our gotchas. Um, this is our breeding center and Kaya has been breeding like crazy like that mass of stuff that walking carpet that is all gigas just just piles of multicolored gigas of every mutation you can imagine we are still cranking out lots more of uh, Kaya has been breeding all the colors of Maywings it's been crazy we're breeding a lot of stuff here um, this whole breeding operation is mostly Kaya's doing although I've been having some fun breeding multicolored gotchas we'll show you that in a minute so uh, this is a lot of our parking for some of our flyers and the stuff we just take out. I love this trophy case that Kaya put together. Is that awesome or what? And uh, yeah, this is how the base looks now. We have been working on it quite a bit. And it was very important for us to have an open floor plan because uh, there's been a lot of raiding going on and a lot of people's bases are getting blasted if they can't find somebody for a haircut. So we have a very open door policy. Anybody can walk right in if they get through our cave, which is not so easy, actually. You'll probably see some videos from the other monarchs about that very soon, in fact. But this is our main base. We have uh, lots of industrial forges because we are constantly smelting metal and creating charcoal and all kinds of stuff because uh, we've been very busy getting supplies. So this is all of our uh, supplies here. We have uh, kind of gone a little bit overboard. We've got snails, dung beetles, multiple chem benches and everything we need for crafting stations. So this is kind of our main crafting area. This is the kitchen. And uh, yeah, check it out. We've actually got a really nice little kitchen system with all the veggies and fruits and stuff like that. This is actually my room, and uh, yeah, as you can see, um, we've been pretty busy. We've got some pretty nice gear. This is uh, Captain Fat Otter. He's my little friend here. And uh, yeah, Kaya actually has done all the decorating here. Let me actually clear that out. There we go. Kaya has done all the decorating and actually drew us these really cool little paintings. I love it. I got my Tapehara on the wall, you know, because everybody knows how I love Tapeharas and collect them like cats. And unicorns, because uh, I may or may not be breeding a lot of unicorns, right? And I love how the crystals are just like right over our base. They actually light up really bright at nighttime. So we've got nice little night lights. It's probably hard for Kaya to sleep in her room. But uh, the center of our base is all of our, uh, you know, more secure stuff. We've got our cryo fridges, blueprints, and all that good stuff. 
Got an industrial forge built right into the base. That's kind of handy. And uh, upstairs, we have Kaya and Dave's rooms. So this is Kaya's room. She did all of the decorating and all the furniture in our base. And, uh, you know, as you can see, she's got some pretty awesome style going on. You won't find her to cut her hair because uh, she's been having login problems. So if you raid our base, uh, just send us a screenshot of you in our house and I'm sure we can arrange some haircuts. But check it out. Is this awesome or what? Yeah, loves love the shine horns. We'll show you those pretty soon. And uh, Kaya has her own hot tub. You know, unfortunately, we had to make glass windows everywhere. So, you know, and then here is Dave's room. So check it out. Dave is asleep on the floor with a bow, you know, got to protect himself. And uh, we've got all of our storage for most of our gear. Love the painting. That's so awesome. Of course, Sir Beakington theme and everything. Yep. Just love the decoration. Kaya did all the fun decoration in here. Got a bunch of crafting stations, some more rare item storage up here. And uh, this is actually pretty cool. I don't know if you guys have seen these before, but this is a vivarium. So everything inside here, we've got all kinds of different creatures cryoed in here, and they actually produce materials inside their cryopods, and we get those picked up. It's a very handy thing to have. And you know, sometimes you just gotta do a sick drum solo, and uh, you know, got that going. Love to do that when Kaya's sleeping, just kidding. Um, and then on top of the base, we have our really epic light show that's going on all the time. You know, it's like a party all the time over here. But uh, yeah, we've been crafting a bunch of stuff in that tech replicator. And of course, we've got our elevators that'll take you straight to the top floor or center. And that's really handy getting around. It's way easier than stairs. So uh, yeah, that is our main base. And I'll show you around a little out here too, because uh, you gotta see what we've been doing with our gotchas. It's, it's kind of insane. So uh, I'm cloning gotchas that I like using the cloning chambers, and that's been very helpful because gotchas are very hard to get the ones you want. In fact, I have been breeding, uh, I actually was breeding about 30 gotchas at a time all the time. It was kind of getting obsessive, but uh, as you can see, it's paid off. We have a lot of gotchas producing a lot of materials. And uh, each of these little bubbles makes it so they don't get sad being around other gotchas, so you can keep the production going constantly. And it's a pretty cool little system. Kaya set most of this up. I've actually added a couple upgrades myself. But we have a farm right here in the back, and check this out. We're growing plant species Y traps. And these guys constantly produce hundreds of thousands of plant Y traps, which then can be eaten by the gotchas and converted into materials. And uh, that was just the first floor. The second floor has actually got even more of these things. And I don't know, I lost count around like four or 500 crops going on all at the same time. But uh, it definitely pays off like a lot. So we've got it set to where when we step on this button, it transfers about 100,000 traps to all of the Gavagers split evenly, and then all the gotchas munch on them. We've got a snow owl producing pellets. We're growing a bunch more snow owls to do that, which increases the rarity of their loot. And then all of these crystal crackers here pick up the crystals they drop and crack them automatically. All of the materials get separated out, and uh, then we just hit this button right here, which separates all the materials and sends 817,000 items into the dedicated storage. And then this one sends anything that didn't get picked up by dedicated into this box. And uh, it's, it's a decent amount of stuff. That's just the stuff that's not in dedicated. And uh, here's the dedicated storage. It's been kind of ridiculous how these gotchas are uh, producing stuff. And then of course we've got a grinder to grind down the materials. We've got vaults to uh, store all the gear that they give us and element conversion right here in this little spot. And so, uh, yeah, it's it's been working out pretty well for us. Our base is definitely coming along nicely. And I can't wait to catch you guys up on everything that we've been doing, which I'll start doing right after this. So back to the present, the next thing on our to-do list after getting a house that wasn't getting surprise renovations every other day was to get some water tames. And uh, surprise, we had one just waiting outside our front door. 
I mean, literally, right outside our front door. And uh, since this little trap here that works for Rexes works just fine for basically everything else, all we had to do was to get him through these dang doors that always slam in the face of every dino I'm trying to tame. I always forget to set them on manual. So uh, this guy has just decided to go vegetarian and he's trying to eat all of our plants instead. But oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, okay, are you finally chasing me? Yep, that's... That's perfect. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you for your contribution to our team. So uh, he is now in the Rex trap, and all we got to do is trank him down from complete safety, as long as I don't get too close. And uh, whoa, those things are so jumpy. Oh my gosh. All right. So uh, we knocked him out pretty quickly, and uh, since we had plenty of kibble in the fridge, we were able to tame him up in no time at all and get a really easy Sarko tame, and we already had a really good saddle that we picked up in a drop. So Fire Pumpkin and I met up at the swamp to try to tame a couple more Sarkos so we could each have a breeding pair, and what are you doing? Come back over here. I promise this Sarko had no damage. I checked with a spyglass, and it's just running away from me. Why? I didn't do anything to you. Come back. Oh my gosh, really? Sarkos can be so difficult sometimes. All right, so I lost track of it completely. It went in the water, and I finally got its aggro back, and now it's finally getting into this little trap. It's a real simple trap, just a couple foundations and ramps, but it's working pretty well. So Fire Pumpkin and I, oh, there's a snake. Nope, nope. Let's grab that guy and see if we can get his aggro away. And why is everything being so difficult? Oh my gosh, follow me. So uh, yeah, Fire Pumpkin and I both had audio that wasn't really great because she had a noise machine going because it was pretty late at night and her kids were asleep. And uh, I was actually not able to use my mic at all because it was late enough. But we picked up another pig because uh, Kai had been keeping an eye out for one of those for her farm and after we knocked out the Sarko we dropped the pig on there and just went ahead and tamed everything and then we realized after taming it that this was a level 20 Sarko not the level 95 female that we thought we were taming because it gave us the slip and switched places with another Sarko so we finally knocked that one down and since we now had three Sarkos between us we went ahead and bred eggs and we were able to both go home with a breeding pair of Sarkos so we'd have some nice little water mounts. Oh, and remember the last episode we tamed that high-level Quetzal that almost drowned and we miraculously pulled off the tame? Well now we are breeding very high-level baby Quetzals and we're not going to have any shortage of carry birds. Which is very helpful because I've set up resource outposts all over the map. And Dave just announced we are going to have a massive PvP battle, and we're allowed to use shoulder mounts. So Kaya and I are trying to tame some high-level Dimorphodons, because the cave we live in is full of Dimorphodons. And as soon as I found out this Dimorphodon was a high level, he dove right into a bush and disappeared. But it was a piece of cake to flush him out of his hiding spot, KO him, and tame him. But then Kaya spotted a female Dimorphodon with great stats while she was already trying to tame a bear, and it got messy. <laughs> Alright, hold still. We'll just do this the old-fashioned way, right? Oh, I got it! Nice! <laughs> Here we Yay. go, okay. Well, that worked. That worked okay. Oh, you stripped me of my uh, gloves and my shoes. But... <laughs> oh, no! I am trying to reach oh, its inventory. Oh, and the bear's there. Oh gosh. Might as well just get this over with. Yeah. Okay, I'm I'm trying to reach its inventory and it's not letting me. Oh no. Oh, uh, I'll help you in a second. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I need to grab some mutton too. Dang it. <laughs> Come on. I think his hitbox might be totally obscured. Wait, wait. Do I have him? Come on, come on. Come on. I think I got him. Yes. Did you get him? He's about to wake up though. No, no, you got not. 28 you got torpidity. 28. Okay, I got narcs. Got no, mutton. I don't have narcs. I got him. Oh, no. I got him. Hold on, he's eating now. <laughs> oh this, my god. This was so messed up, but I think we got it. Yes. <laughs> Woohoo! Woo, that was so messed up. <laughs> well, you want to grab her oh, and start goodness. breathing? <laughs> Yeah, there we go. That was she, quite sweaty, that one. She was <laughs> moments from waking up when I finally hit her with that lasso. And this, my mm. friends, is why I tamed a horse <laughs> right there. <laughs>
So I found out the Sarkos weren't quite fast and maneuverable enough to get through the underwater cave that Dave was trying to do to get the last artifact that we needed to do our first boss run. So uh, I went to tame a dolphin because our tribe had already tamed a female dolphin and female shark and uh, I needed to just find a male so we could breed them, get a backup before that crazy dangerous cave. So the male dolphin was pretty easy to tame, but of course, if you need a male shark, you're gonna end up finding tons of female sharks, and it's really hard to find the one you actually want. So after playing a deadly game of tag, I finally got a male shark to follow me into my little taming pen, and uh, oh yikes, that's very close. Okay, come on, right there, and you just stand still. Yeah, okay, there's all the other sharks just hanging out. All right, let's see if I can lock him in the back with a gate, and yep, that's the male that I wanted. But he's, of course, standing right in front of the gate. All right, let's see if we can pull this out without getting chomped. All right, stay right there. You just chill. And why didn't that come? OK, there we go. OK, well, he seems pretty happy. He's just hanging out now that I've got him in this pen. All right. Well, now all we got to do is knock this guy out after we make sure our Maywing doesn't get eaten by all of his girlfriends. And uh, let's knock this sucker out and tame ourselves a shark. You know, it's kind of funny. This is actually the first shark I've ever tamed. I usually go for other water mounts. So uh, there you go. First shark tame for Ark Survival Guide is in the bag. And now we can breed backups for all of our water tames in the nice little pond we have at our base. Oh yeah, I haven't shown you guys this pond in our base. So it fills up with about 30 saber tooth salmon at a time. And we set up a nice little fishing system. So all I've got to do is turn on our plant X turrets, give them a little punch, and then uh, it's fishing just like Crocodile Dundee. All the fish just get shot and you just pick up all the meat and you have like a thousand fish meat for feeding all of your baby water tames. And before I set this up, I used to fish with my wyvern. Now, I can't quite tell you how the physics work out for this, but it's actually a very effective way to go fishing. So I think we'll wrap it up here because we did a lot of stuff this episode. But in the next episode, we are going to have an all out war with all of the monarchy to decide once and for all if pineapple belongs on pizza. And I know I'm kind of behind a lot of the other monarchs in our series because I had a lot going on for the holidays, but I am catching up and in the next episode, we're going to do a bunch of stuff too. And make sure you sub with all notifications enabled because we've got another episode coming out really soon because we're going to try to catch up this series before Lost Island releases on December 14th. And we have a lot to do before then. Thank you so much for watching this video from the Ark Survival Guide. Please give it a thumbs up and share it around because that helps us so much. And drop a comment, we love hearing from you. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and ring that bell for all notifications so you don't miss our next video, which will come out very soon. And while you wait, we have tons of other videos you can watch right now, so check these out. And until next time, stay safe, have fun, and we will see you in the next video.